So at this point, I think you've earned my trust, right? We've gotten to know each other for a long time, so I can spill the real secrets, okay? So, of course, there are a bunch of pencil tutorials on YouTube. We all know this, but have you ever seen a pencil that looks this realistic? <laughs> Probably not. So I'm gonna show you how to make a pencil, which has a bit more modeling than usual, even though, you know, it just looks like a cylinder with a cone on top. There's a bit more involved, and mostly uh, what's gonna make this look realistic is this monster fucking material, okay? And I know, I know, most of you would rather get punched in the face a thousand times than you know, look at notes, but uh, I'm gonna make it simple. I'm gonna make it easy. So let's begin. I'm gonna be using a Blender version 2.92 alpha uh, because 2.92 gamma was taken. <laughs> um, so first thing we need to do, normal workflow, is first we model, then we unwrap, then we do shading and shit. I'm just gonna skip unwrapping because I don't like it. So uh, it's gonna be procedural. Uh, for the modeling, which is part one, I always like to use reference because what if I have a different image in my head of what a pencil looks like than what it actually is, right? Uh, so I downloaded a reference image. You can just find one on Google Images or, you know, look through your girlfriend's phone for a picture of a pencil. I'm sure you're gonna find a pencil that is both longer and looks better as reference than yours. <laughs> um, find a pencil, okay? And I'm just gonna set this up so that it's facing the x-axis roughly. We can always adjust this later. And again, the reason to use uh, your, your girlfriend's phone's reference and all this is because um, you can actually look at what a pencil actually looks like and not visualize it in your head where it's gonna be shorter or longer. In your case, probably shorter because you know you think that's normal, uh, but most people have a pencil longer than three to four inches. Um, what's the point? The point is let's make a cylinder. I'm gonna start off with this orange part of the pencil, which I looked into this and most pencils, and here's an interesting piece of history. Uh, most pencils have six kind of segments going around it. Uh, some of them have more, some of them have infinity. It's like a cone, not a cone, a cylinder. Some of them have like three. Uh, standard is six, so I'm gonna be using six. So let's take that, rotate it by 90 degrees, scale it down until it's roughly in the right place, and this is where, you know, maybe our x-axis alignment ain't too hot. And for the majority of this process, make sure you're using wireframe, and make sure I'm using full screen, you idiot. If you're not using wireframe, you're not gonna be able to see the image uh, through it. So just scale this until it's like roughly in place. Uh, don't worry if you're like going above the x-axis or anything like that, but I'm just gonna go along the x this way, select those along the x, that way. Now, uh, here comes one of our biggest challenges, and I'm going to talk about how we're going to solve it. It's going to be a bit uh, involved. In this part of the pencil, we somehow go from like a six-sided thing to a infinity-sided thing, like a cone that's perfectly smooth. And uh, the blending <laughs> between those is a bit difficult. I'm not a pro modeler, so I'm just going to show you how a, an average chump like me would deal with it. So in terms of modeling, we're not going to do anything fancy, okay? Um, I'm literally going to take a I guess a cone would be the way to go, but I'm just gonna use another cylinder because I'm more comfortable uh, using cylinders. So I'm gonna put this here, roughly position it correctly, rotate, scale, and we are, whoops, I just forgot. Let's redo that. Make sure that this one has more segments, something like 30, so it's actually more round. Forget I said that. So again, rotate it, just put it in place, and for this transition, we're just gonna be hella lazy with it. So. Just roughly position it where it should be. Edit mode, select these vertices. Again, uh, if you're not in wireframe mode or if you're in solid mode or something, it's gonna do this thing where it looks like it's selecting everything, but it's not gonna select the ones in the back. So be careful of that, okay? Make sure you're using wireframe. Solves that issue. Uh, we're gonna put this over here, scale it down, and you're gonna notice, and this is kind of important, um, this isn't a infinitely you know, sharp tip. They haven't invented <laughs> pencil sharpeners that are that good yet. And remember, keyword yet. Uh, so to make this uh, kind of beveled, we're gonna do exactly that. So select those edges, control B, bevel it by just a few. You know, in fact, this might be the reason that writing is possible. If it was an infinitely sharp tip, I think it would break every single time. Just a bit of life knowledge for you there. Um, okay, so just make sure these are roughly aligned. Again, we're gonna do our blending in a different way. It's not gonna be in terms of uh, in terms of modeling, it's gonna be in terms of shading. And while we're at all this uh, beveling, I'm just gonna select the main body and select all the like six side edges that go around it. What I'm trying to say, it would be easier to see this way. Uh, these edges that go around here, right? I'm gonna select those and let's add a tiny bit of a bevel, just so it looks more realistic. And by the way, if you're getting weird bevels, especially like, I don't know, somewhere here, although I seem to be getting normal ones, make sure you control A, apply rotation and scale. Um, that's just if you did all your scaling in object mode instead of edit mode, you big dingus. 
Um, okay, so I'm just gonna add a bit of a bevel here, and then there's an argument to be made for adding a tiny bit of a bevel here, but I'm not gonna do it, because I trust in the uh, blending we're gonna do later, okay? Uh, final piece, let's uh, speed up a bit. Cylinder, this one should also have a lot of segments since it's uh, supposed to be smooth. We're gonna go into wireframe, move this along here. Here we're gonna make the eraser and the metallic part all in one component. And I know what you're thinking, oh, how are we gonna isolate materials? Like some of it's wood, some of it's metallic. Don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> I'll handle it. Uh, so let's scale this down till it's like roughly in place. And then I guess we also scale it up. And you wanna make sure you're scaling uniformly, not just on one axis, since it's supposed to be a cylinder, not an ellipsoid. Okay, cool, take this. Uh, take those vertices or edges or whatever, bring them over, and then to get this eraser, I mean, you can take an actual eraser uh, or an actual pencil to see what it looks like, but I know, you just take this, you inset it a tiny bit, and we could always modify that later, and then you extrude. Just so that the eraser is kind of poking out of here. And if you want to make it smaller, you select this uh, loop, which is so hard to do in wireframe mode. And then you scale using Shift X, so everything except the X axis, and it's going to do that. So maybe we just want to scale it a tiny bit. Okay. Uh, final thing eraser, bevel it as well. Maybe we should do that from this view so we can see roughly how round it is. Uh, Beveling is important, uh, so make sure you do it. So something like that, and again, if you're getting weird beveling, apply those uh, scales and stuff like that. It's gonna make your bevel uh, behave more normally. Um, so I guess uh, those ridges in the uh, in the metal, the gold, do our pencils made of gold? Uh, we can also do that in modeling, or you could do it, you know, you could do it procedurally, but I'm just gonna do it this way. So, you know, take this uh, loop, bevel it uh, in this way so that we have one loop this way, one this way. So that's just a nice little strategy. Maybe it should be more centered on those ridges. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select these two loops, bevel again, this time with many more. I mean, I don't know exactly how many. I don't need to be precise here. By the way, if you uh, your bevel goes too far, hold C, and it's gonna clamp. C is for clamp, it's also for clitoris. <laughs> uh, but you do that, fine, and then you wanna make sure you merge by distance so that, and you can see 60 vertices were removed, all those, uh, vertices that were wedged and clamped to the edges are no longer going to be duplicates. Okay, um, so I'm just going to take like every other edge loop or something like that. I'm not going to be that precise about this because I simply do not care enough. And you just scale those, but on everything except the x-axis, I suppose. So like that, let's go to solid mode. You do that, and then you just re-bevel them. And maybe you don't need that many faces for this. And just like last time, if you're using clamping, do a merge by distance, okay? Um, so what do we have so far? So far we have, I mean, we have the main body, we have the eraser part of this, we have the cone part of it, none of it's blending together, none of it looks realistic, uh, but now is the step where we fix it. So I'm just gonna call this uh, pencil is available, available on Patreon, because of course I'm gonna post this blend on the Patreon, but I'm not gonna spam you guys with ads right now. Okay, uh, so once you have all this, I'm gonna take all three components and yes, yeah, you, you know it, I'm gonna merge it into one mesh. He's crazy, they said. It's never gonna work, they said, but it will. Um, merge these into one mesh and I'm gonna shade smooth, but just to make sure that the smoothing doesn't happen on an angle that's like uh, gradual enough, right? Uh, go to normals over here, auto smooth. This way, auto smoothing is only gonna work if it meets some kind of criteria. And you can change what that criteria is. So something like 15, it's gonna give us those harsh edges back. And then 30 apparently will do quite a bit of smoothing. Um, but you can always uh, mess around with this later. I think currently this is fine. Maybe I should go back to 30. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, currently this is fine. Let's do some shading. This is where it gets crazy, boys. Uh, buckle up, say goodbye to your parents, okay? Like, th th this is where it gets intense. Um, so in shading, before we do that, I just wanna set up my scene with nice lighting. So I'm just going to cycles, cause if you're not using cycles, you may as well go home. <laughs> um, also, we're gonna use an HDRI, so. And then that's just for environmental lighting instead of uh, putting lights in. So world, color, environment, texture, open that environment texture, and I'm gonna go to HDRIs and pick one that's, I guess, indoors, cause usually you're used to seeing pencils indoors, I don't know. And if you wanna get rid of that shit in the background, film, Transparent, we golden boys. Okay, uh, how are we gonna do this? This seems like a nightmare. How are we gonna do this all in one material, okay? So this is our pencil material. Uh, first of all, why is this a nightmare? It's a nightmare because whatever we do, yes, we can make it look realistic to this orange or to the tip or the, the graph, graphene, graphite. 
graphic, <laughs> the wood, whatever, the metal. We can make it look like any of those things, but all of them together in one material? That seems hard. Like, shouldn't we be using a bunch of material slots and assigning them? Uh, maybe. Uh, but I'm, I'm a crazy man, so here's what we're going to do. First, first of all, we need a way to separate different sections of this pencil, right? Uh, if you think about this pencil as going along the x-axis, as we go along the x-axis, the material changes. So first we have this material, then we keep going, it's wood, we keep going, it's orange wood, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, so somehow we need to extract that x information. To do this, I'm going to separate the generated coordinates and look at x, uh, which is behaving weird, because again, uh, apply rotation and scale every single time. And now you can see we get a nice gradient along the x-axis, right, left to right. Black is uh, left, one is right, and the gradient is in between. So if we do something like math greater than to see where this gradient is bigger than some number, we get a way to sweep across of this. Wow, super cool. It's like the first time you go to water country, but that's probably a local phenomenon. Okay, um, so what we need to do is separate it uh, into different materials. We're just going to blend a bunch of BSDFs this way. Uh, let's start off by doing this separation right here. Uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to use something like a math greater than, and I'm just going to roughly, doesn't need to be perfect, but roughly... Uh, pick a number that's close to where I want it to be, okay? Uh, this is procedural. We can always change it later. And by the way, this is going to be the secret to blending these together, right? You can see there's these ridges. If we can add those in, that's going to hide the geometry transition uh, pretty well, okay? Okay, so how do we turn this sharp line that we can modify into one that has ridges, which is important for this, but also for the graphene transition? Well, uh, if we distort our texture coordinates and then use the same process, that we should get a distorted line. A uh, general way to do this, noise texture, and then you mix it together, right? So we're basically just adding chaos to this. I'm an agent of chaos, noise texture says. Uh, you just add some noise and make sure you're using the same coordinate system. I think it uses generated by default, but uh, generated noise is going to mix with generated coordinates. And we're going to set this to linear light. Uh, why? Uh, don't worry about it, okay? Uh, basically, this is a way to mix them together without one overpowering another and causing translation and stuff like that. But uh, with linear light, you now have a slider to say, how much distortion do I want? Yay. And uh, we want roughly this amount of distortion, but, but uh, maybe we don't want it to be this insane. And uh, to change that, this is just our distortion setting. So you go to scale, you bring it down. Now it's uh, more gradual. You can even bring the detail down, stuff like this. I don't know what numbers I actually settled for, so I'm just going to mess around with this a bit. I think I want something closer to 2. We can also go to 4-dimensional noise, so we get a 3-dimensional cr cross-section of a 4-dimensional noise, as I like to say. And this just lets us have a bit more control. Something like this. And we can always modify it later. Like, this is a much more insane version of this kind of wavy thing. Um, and again, the nice thing about this, since this is a distorted coordinate system now that is separated, we can still move it down the pencil. So I'm just going to maybe reposition this by a tiny bit, shift it down a little. Okay. Um, now we have a mask where left black is going to be one material, right uh, white, wow, I'm a, I'm a rhymer, is going to be another. So take two BSDFs, mix them together. By the way, all these hotkeys, everybody's like, oh, how do you do them? Enable uh, stream keys, enable stream keys. Just enable node ring, or how about that, okay? <laughs> uh, mix these together. We're going to use this as the factor. Um, in other words, if we change one, it's going to be the left side. If we change the other, it's going to be the right side, okay? Um, so now all we have to do is focus on these uh, materials. Let's start off with the easy one, which is this one, okay? This one, we hit E for eyedropper, also for extract, <laughs> and you can just click uh, the color that you want. Okay, so now we've extracted the color of that. Um, also, also, let's move this over. Also, we can not only control color, but certain properties of this pencil, like how reflective it is, whatever. And by the way, I do want to move this uh, reference plane just a bit away and a bit upwards, so it's, you know, not in our face too much. And notice that uh, this is going to look a bit darker, but that's just because of the environment, right? We can also make the color itself. I guess we can't make it much brighter, but we can change properties about it. Let me undo that. Come on. Um, what was I saying? We can change properties about this. How shiny is that part? How whatever is it? Um, this part, I think, is kind of shiny, but not too much. So I'm going to do roughness 0.6. We can come back to that. And now let's uh, move on to this wood. So at any point, we can mess with this, these uh, BSDFs. Now, the reason I'm adding in noise texture here is you can see it's not one color. We kind of have a mix of two colors, and I want to simulate that. So noise texture, I'm just going to visualize it. We're then going to do a color ramp to make it more intense, because right now it's kind of gradual. 
So we say make it very black, even if you're halfway through very white. Otherwise, add detail, add roughness, just so we have a good mixing of black and white. And then to incorporate these two colors, you could either do it directly in the color ramp or what I prefer is mix RGB, right? So we're gonna use this as a factor to mix two colors. Which two colors? Uh, well, we can eye drop them. So color one can be like a light part of the pencil and part two, again, that's E, can be a dark part. So now it's gonna mix those two colors you can see. Apply that as a base color, look at the mix, and you can see we kind of have achieved it. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it later. Um, okay, cool. Um, this blending ain't looking too hot uh, currently. I mean, we are incredibly zoomed in, uh, but we can move this to our advantage so that this uh, wave kind of creeps over it, and that's going to do quite a bit of blending. Something like 0.1? No. 0.05. A lot of this really is just messing with numbers until it looks right. Uh, but you can see now that since this uh, shader is kind of independent of the geometry, we only care about the x uh, axis, it kind of creeps over it in a nice way that blends stuff together, it seems. Um, okay, okay. Uh, what else can we do to make this realistic? Well, with the wood, uh, the wood should also have a bit of bump to it, right? It should not just look like it has variation, it should actually be kind of rough to touch, right? It's not gonna be a perfectly smooth surface. So take the color ramp that we used before, we're gonna convert that into normal information and then apply it as normal information, right? That's what the bump node does. Now, of course, it's gonna be hella intense. So just bring it down until it's subtle. Uh, so this is without, and then this is a width. It just adds a bit of something. So 0.125 or something. Okay, so, and remember, we're never gonna look at a pencil this closely, okay? So it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, tiny modifications, the color could be a bit more orange instead of yellow. So I'm just gonna shift it along here, or you could use the hue slider, another way to do that. Something like that. And now uh, let's keep making materials. Let's uh, do the graphene, graphite, the, the stuff you write with. I feel like I can't remember, I haven't written in so long. I can't remember it, and also by the way, I haven't mentioned this. I, I was gonna lead with this, but I forgot. You, did you notice the Easter egg? It's Musgrave. You remember Musgrave texture? Just saying. <laughs> um, okay, so how do we add more materials? Well, we're just gonna repeat the process, right? So we're gonna use another principled BSDF, and you might wanna be a bit better at, at naming these, so you could just hit N and name this thing a Graphene. I swear that's not what it's called, but whatever. And then you can see this is called Graphene. This can be called like orange, so it's the orange part of the pencil, et cetera. You can keep doing it this way. Uh, but I'm just gonna mix this with the graphene. How are we gonna mix it? With another um, factor uh, mask that we're gonna make. So another greater than, and we can connect the x-axis here. Let's visualize it. Uh, this one should only be uh, at the very tip. So we move it all the way down, something like that. And you can see that this version also has a bit of noise applied to it. So I'm gonna separate using the same thing. Um, so just play around with this until you find the number. I think mine's gonna be like around 0.04. That's slightly too big. 3.5, something like that. You can always mess around with it later. Although I do like the look of 0.04. Uh, we want to invert uh, this mask because we want everything we had before, but then wherever it's white, apply the, the uh, graphene uh, shader. Uh, so instead of greater than, set it to less than, or you could use a invert node. That's just gonna flip it. And then we are gonna mix how uh, using this. Okay, so you can see we have everything from before, but now the tip is gonna be using this BSDF. So that's gonna be black, and it's also gonna be very shiny. Because, I, I don't know, it's pretty smooth, so it's supposed to be shiny. I guess maybe not that shiny. Maybe 0.4 should be a good place to stop that. Uh, okay, cool. Um, if anything, I think it looks A, a bit too dark, so I'm just gonna make it kind of a grayish, something like that, and B, could use a bit more detail, which if I wanna add detail, it's also gonna affect uh, this one since we're using the same x-axis. You could separate them. I'm just gonna add a bit of detail anyways, cause I don't care too much. And just a bit of roughness. Maybe that was too much detail, something like that. Okay, so uh, cool. Now how do we do, I mean, this is kind of subtle. How do we do this uh, white transition line? I'm just gonna make that part uh, quick. We're gonna make another BSDF. We're gonna call this white because that's just gonna be the, the transition, you know, the drill at this point, we're gonna mix again. This time to make uh, the mask, it's gonna be a bit more, not complicated, but different, right? Because we don't wanna use the less than or greater than, where it's isolating areas to the left or right. Um, and by the way, we can just copy this number from before. So it's at the exact same transition point. And we don't want it to be left or right, right? We want it to be kind of a band. Uh, to do that, compare node, we're gonna compare 
the inputs, the x, distorted x to 0.108, I guess, and we're gonna have a threshold of some number. And you're gonna see that it, what it effectively does is it kind of centers it. Um, so I'm just gonna make that a very, very tiny variation. So tiny that you can't even see it. Um, and we could actually just visualize what that looks like. And we need to make sure we apply that factor. Boop. And this should be, what should this be? I guess this should be white. And it shouldn't be too reflective. If anything, it should be roughly the same, roughly the same rough. I'm killing it today. Roughly the same roughness as that. Um, let's see. So I guess it wasn't perfectly positioned because I guess I didn't copy that number correctly. Boop. And now you can see it's right uh, there. So I'm going to make it maybe half as a thick and stuff like that. You can see this is a nice way to get the transition line in the right place. Um, at this point, I'm going to backpedal a bit with that detail idea. Okay. Uh, we've we've done a lot of the pencil now. How do we make the metal and all that? You know the drill uh, this part has a bit of a subtlety though that you might have not uh, been prepared for so prepare yourself So we're gonna make a gold BSDF. We're gonna mix it uh, But this time instead of doing something like a greater than less than and then isolating the area That's like I don't know somewhere over here where where it tra transitions into gold uh, We don't want it to actually be distorted anymore, right? It's using our distorted using noise uh, texture coordinates uh, but it should be a harsh uh, line, okay? Uh, to fix this, right, you still want the harsh line, but you don't want to mess with anything else. Uh, we're just going to do the same thing. But this version, we're not going to use any noise. So generated goes directly in here. So this time we're separating without any of this stuff before. And we're going to use this x-axis instead. And you can see that's perfectly sharp. Um, so now all we need to do is pick the number. I don't know exactly what it is, but we'll figure it out. Uh, the number that is on the cutoff. Something like that, but a tiny bit less, but also a tiny bit more. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so now we've isolated the area to the right. We're going to use that as another mix factor, and you can see how crazy this gets pretty quickly. Uh, this version, again, since these are all separate from each other, uh, we want it to be metallic. We want it to be very shiny, and we want the color of it to not be silvery, but kind of goldeny, but not too saturated. Something like that. And you can also, I mean... I was going to say that you can also like bring down the metallicness and stuff like that, but that's not physically correct. Uh, the reason this looks so bright of uh, the gold is because of the environment, right? If we change the environment to something different, we're going to get different lighting conditions, right? So you can see now it's brighter. And that's kind of the danger uh, with these kinds of things, right? We're making it relative to the environment we're in. Uh, so always make sure you switch between these. Um, but okay, that's looking pretty good. We could add in a bit of nonsense with anastropic and stuff like that. Anastropic. The tropics? <laughs> this thing. We could uh, mess with it. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna keep uh, doing this process, okay? So we're gonna copy. We're gonna mix. This one's gonna be the eraser, which is kind of like a pink rubber, which means it's gonna have a high roughness. Again, we're gonna use the uh, new greater than workflow that doesn't use distorted coordinates. And we just want to isolate this time uh, where the cutoff happens to the eraser. So just pick a number. I'm sure there's a clever way to do this. You could like probably measure where it's supposed to be. But I'm not gonna. Just find the number. Slightly less than that. But so also slightly more than that. This is hell. <laughs> Boop. Okay, that's pretty good. You can always come back and change these numbers. You can think of these as your sliders. Uh, connect this here. Mix shader. What's this version going to be? I'm just going to use a fresh principled BSDF so that we don't have to change everything. Uh, this version is going to be, I guess it's probably best to just sample the color. E for extract or eyedropper. Sample the color. Make sure that this is fairly rough uh, because this is a rubber, which means it really doesn't reflect too much, uh, which is kind of the point. I don't know exactly what the number should be, but it should be pretty high. We can also make that a bit more saturated. And maybe that's too saturated, but whatever. Um, okay, so at this point, we do have a pencil. Let's see what we like about it. It does have noise here. Um, is this already set to shade smooth? It's because of the uh, normal angle. The cutoff's not very harsh. Um, but what, what was the point? Uh, we have noise in some places. We have smooth stuff in other places. If you want, you could use an image texture and project this text onto here and give it that gold material. Uh, but the main takeaway of this is we have these blue nodes. What do they do? They control, they control um, where the materials bleed off to. Okay, so you can change this very procedurally in that sense. Um, only thing I'm not liking about this too much currently 
is the, the uh, color of the uh, center stuff, but that could just be, you know, you make it more rough uh, so that the color kind of bleeds through uh, more and stuff like that. I mean, you, you, could, you could just change these settings later, but let me just show you the final version. I mean, this is the essence of it, right? You just kind of modify shit from this point on. Um, but is this the version I made originally? Yes, this is the version I made originally. I spent a bit more time honing in these settings and stuff like that. You can see the setup's basically the same here. Uh, the only uh, difference is that for this like white transition line, I decided to do it all in one BSDF using a uh, compare node like before, but then using a mix RGB. Okay, um, th there really is no difference there. Uh, but you, you just stack BSDFs, you mix them and stuff like that. And uh, if you put a piece of paper under it, it will reflect that and it will make it look brighter and like we're writing on something and stuff like that. So uh, I might do a part two for this one, like how to actually write with something like this. I guess one more thing I should mention before we get there, if we do wanna write, um, once you have your model complete, Again, you can go go in and tweak these settings. Once you have your model complete, you don't want it to be rotating and animating from some weird pivot point. Uh, usually we do it from the tip of the pencil, okay? Or you could have it from here where you'd hold it. Uh, to do that, what we're gonna do is let's enable, let's go to layout actually so we can see what we're doing. Look at that, the materials add so much. Um, what we can do is we can select the vertices at the very tip, shift S, cursor to selected, so now the cursor is where we uh, put that stuff. And then we're gonna set the origin to the cursor. So it's kind of like the cursor is an in intermediary uh, for this. But now that the origin's at the tip, you can see it's rotating off the top. Uh, so you could do that thing I did before where let's uh, center this, center it like that. Uh, now you have like a freely rotating pencil that can be on a piece of paper or something like that. Um, again, just modify the colors a bit more. So I might do a part two about how to actually make this write something. I don't know if people would be interested in that though. Maybe they would. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching this monumentally long tutorial. I've never seen a pencil a pencil tutorial this long. And what's this on the right? Is it a list of uh, keys on a piano? No, it's the 680, 70 some, I don't know the number anymore, patrons that are actively supporting the default cube and CG Matter Patreon. Why are they doing that? And by the way, thank you. Uh, but why are they doing that? Well, they get blend files in return. So for example, this blend, or not this one, but I guess the final one that I clean up a bit is gonna be available. Any other blend I've ever uploaded, also available, just with a one month subscription. Also uh, exclusive tutorials, those that are not uploaded to either channel. I do usually tutorial series one or two times a month. I'm thinking, by the way, of making a uh, Unity game, a Blender Plus Unity game as one of those uh, tutorial series because I've been messing around with, well, you know what, whatever. It's the end of the tutorial. I can show you a little something. This video is a bit cringe, but you can see I made a, a boggle simulator and it actually works, right? So it's a physics base and stuff like that. So I'm planning on making a, a tutorial series about this. Like I'm not a Unity master, but just like, you know, first Unity project, how do we do it? You can look at that, wow. Um, so exclusive tutorials over there, also behind the scenes, uh, well, what else? Discord, early access, sometimes if I'm ahead of schedule, this one might even be uploaded early access of somebody commented 30 hours ago before it was even uploaded. That's how it happened. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's the that's the gist. Join Patreon if you want to. It's in the, the links in the description. Don't join it if you don't want to. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial. And now you know how to make the best fucking pencil in the world.